In today's video, I'm going to talk about staying warm and what combination of things you can use to stay warm and stay comfortable as winter is coming and it's getting colder and colder each night. What combinations can you use so that you can have the most comfort in your car camper? So if you're interested in that, hold on, here we go. So up until now, I've just been using this blanket and I'm not, it's kind of like a fleece like blanket. Uh, it's not flannel, but it's got some nice thickness and this is a queen size and I, du I doubled it over and this has been working fine up until the last couple nights. So I have been using the Electro Warrants electric mattress heater, which works great. Um, it's under the sheet, so you lay on top of it and the part that you're laying on stays warm. Um, but now that the temperatures are getting so cold and, and what I'm trying to do is, is uh, reduce any reliance on the climate control on the card. I mean, you, you can use that and it's fine. The engine kicks on, runs, shuts off, and it's plenty warm. But I'm trying to see if I can do that without having to rely on the climate control. So what's been happening is several things. Is as the night gets colder and colder, I, I turn it up and turn it up and turn it up. And it will stay warm. But the bottom is warm, but because I have this blanket, um, the heat is passing through the blanket when it gets down to about 58 inside the car. And so the bottom of me is warm, but the top of me is cold. And so that's where it's been standing uh, last night. And so I'm going to try some different things to try to fix that. But irregardless, when it gets, it gets too cold, I just wake up. I take a dive over into the driver's seat. And I reach down for the brake pedal and hit the on button that kicks on the system and it gets me some heat. But what I've noticed was if I just try to stay warm with just the electric blanket, I am chewing up some amps. And I used quite a few amps last night and put a sizable dent in my batteries. So I'm going to find a better way. One of the reasons I stuck with the blanket is it has one extreme advantage to being in such a small space. I can fold up that blanket and it fits perfectly behind this seat and the microwave and still has room to put quite a bit of things on top of it. One of the big disadvantages is you got to, when you're in this small, you've got to keep that, you have to keep the space uncluttered. So in the morning when I'd wake up, I had to fold that blanket and that is really difficult to fold when you're not going outside and you're staying inside the car. I've got this great sleeping bag from Coleman and it's rated down to 20 degrees. Um, and I could use that, but it's very large. And the main problem is it's extremely big. So you can see how it compares to there. So if I had that, it's, there's just nowhere to put it. It's massive and it would take up a whole seat somewhere. So I went to my local REI co-op because um, I figured they'd be pretty knowledgeable and have people who know what they were talking about. And I was right. I found an expert there who I told him the situation and he gave me several options. And the one I decided on this is this Kelty Cosmic Down. It's a nice down sleeping bag and it's rated down to 20 degrees but what's amazing is it's pretty easy to get in the stuff sack and it's actually smaller than the blanket it fits even better behind the seat and and another advantage is um, so when i get up in the morning i can just stuff it in this bag and put it behind the seat and that's not going to take any time at all now there was one downside and that's the price and like I've said before in my videos, if it's something you're going to use all the time, put the money into it. So this was $170. It was a little bit cheaper online. What it was nice was if you join their co-op, you get every year you get a check for 10% back uh, for what you buy during the year. And since I spent over $100, they gave me the membership for $20 and then a $20 gift card, which I can use um, during the next month. So that was pretty cool. So a nice shout out to REI. So another problem I had was I noticed last night my feet were getting extremely cold. And what I discovered was there's not a lot of, there's a little bit of insulation in these back cubbies, but there's none on these doors. They are just plastic. And so there is nothing between here and the metal. And so I'm getting some uh, problems with cold coming in. Plus, the previous owner's dog ate the end off, so it, there's not even this cover. So I could feel the cold air coming through the blanket from both this side and from this side over here. Now this side's my fault <laughs> because when I put in the second battery, there wasn't room to put back the cover. So what I'm going to do is I have bought some insulation. I've used this before. This is just standard pink insulation, but it's a very small amount and I've used this before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything out and get access to both sides and I'm going to put this insulation in. 
So I want to be able to camp when it gets well into the 30s at night and possibly even in the 20s. And I, will, I want to be comfortable, I want to be warm, and I don't want the engine to have to run all the time to keep up with the heating needs or to reimburse the batteries for the uh, electric bed heater running on high all the time at seven amps. So I'm gonna give that a try. So next step is insulation, taking the car apart. So getting to this point is pretty simple. Just took everything out. The bed just lifts out, just unplug the 12 volt plug for the bed heater. And then um, I just only have one screw right here which holds in the microwave. Now the next part is just pull up, just take the carpet mat out. And then you have the basement cover. And that whole thing will lift up and out. Once you take that hatch cover off, this is one of the great things about some of the older Toyotas is this storage that's underneath the floor. Okay, so I've got everything out. Everything's showing here. If you ever wonder, that's where the battery, the big battery, the 200 volt battery is. It's not very big, it just goes from here to the back of the seats. And um, if your battery ever goes bad, it's usually just a cell. And so what they can do is they can pull this out, a professional, and I've seen videos, it's not terribly involved. They pull it out, they can test each cell, and then you can get a refurbished cell for about $25. And they can just replace that cell, put it back in. So that was one of the reasons I was interested in the Prius, that it is easy to fix the battery. Now, the bottom of the, of the tray that goes on here is insulated, so I'm not going to worry about the insulation here. don't want to do anything near the battery. But what I'm interested in is I have pulled out this little piece right here and it has just a teeny bit of insulation on it so what I'm gonna where I think the cold air is coming from is this right here so I'm going to tuck some insulation in right here being careful of the wires okay so I got it tucked in just against the back side I got this filled this hole filled in and I went ahead and went back behind on the back wall down here and around the corner being careful not to touch the battery and not to cover any cables and I tucked a little bit along here. I don't know if that'll do any good, but this part right here isn't insulated. This is a vent that is an air vent coming out of the, of the battery compartment to outside. Um, and it feels cold, but I'm just going to leave it like this. On the left side, I've got this all packed in, kind of in a big area as much as I could reach. Um, while I had it out, I went, I had some extra, so I went around here behind the battery on the outside, avoiding all the wires, and put another piece. I should have actually bought some more because there's a nice big hole right there and ran it back through here and stayed away from all this stuff. I just made an interesting discovery. Um, I never looked on the bottom of this bin. I just thought the whole thing was insulated, but it certainly is not. Only the part over the tire insul is insulated. So all this metal over here and all this metal over here is uninsulated and it's cold to the touch. So I'm going to go back to the hardware store and I'm going to go get some more insulation and take care of this. I'm at my neighborhood Lowe's which is about a 40 minute round trip and I always preach get plenty extra. I didn't the project expanded so I got three more rolls. You can always take back what you don't use. Back in perfectly. It was no problems. Now there's two things I'm going to be watching for. One, does it make really make a difference? And Number two, is there going to be a moisture problem? So I'll need to pull this all out in two or three days, pull the bin out and feel for moisture and see if there is a problem. And if there is, we'll have to regroup and try something else. All right, I'm all set up for a nice cozy evening editing videos. So the plan tonight is to start off with the car off and the bed warmer off and just the sleeping bag and see how cold it gets, what it gets down to, and then add heat as needed. Ah, good morning. It's definitely cold out there. So the night went well. Um, I've got some updates on the insulation. I found a huge place for heat loss. I'll go over those in a minute, but first the numbers. So outdoor last night, um, it got down to 32 degrees, and right now it's 35. So inside, what happened was when about the time I went to bed, it was um, 67 degrees in here, very comfortable. I unzipped the sleeping bag and just used it as a blanket and that was fine and about midnight I woke up and it was still fine but I realized the temperature was dropping because it had got down to about 57 degrees inside 
So I decided to go ahead and zip up and get in the sleeping bag and that was fine for the rest of the night. Now this morning when it got down to about 47, I was still okay. Um, I wasn't I wasn't overly cold. It wasn't overly warm. I was okay. And I think really this was my, since it was my first time um, staying this cold in a sleeping bag that I could get used to it. But what I did is this morning when I woke up, uh, when the sun came up, I rolled over and opened up my privacy curtain and turned on the climate control and the car warmed up real quick. So the settings I used was... I put it on automatic so that it would do the air conditioning to turn on the compressor and put it on outside air and that ran that for about five minutes and that cleared up all the condensation right away made it quite warm in here and I, I had a, a temperature set I think about um, 70 for about five minutes and then I backed the temperature down to 65 which is the lowest you can run the heat and I put it on recirculate and I turned off the AC and then I climbed back in my bed, slept for a little bit more, and it was just absolutely wonderful. So the total energy usage was 68 watt hours, which is, which is about five and a half amps for the whole night. And the reason that's a little bit more than just the um, refrigerator running was I was also charging my phone, which uses a half amp as it charges. Now, the interesting thing I thought was I was able to maintain a 15 degree difference in temperature from the outside to the inside during the night. So let's talk about the insulation. So I felt around all the places that I insulated yesterday and they did great. They felt like the same temperature as the inside. Um, I did find one huge heat loss which would explain a lot for the feet. This back hatch cover was freezing cold, literally freezing. Some of the condensation was actually turning to frost. Now I've pulled that cover off before to fix the handle so I know how to do it. So when it gets a little warmer today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop that hatch off, that cover off, I'll show you how to do it. It's not difficult and I'm gonna insulate that and then hopefully that will provide a better differential during the night. All right, because it's so cold out and this is gonna take a little bit of time and I don't wanna do it till later, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right about now and I'm going to post a separate video on how to pull this out. So to sum up, big fan, big, big fan of this Kelty Cosmic Down. Look how it just takes nothing, no room. Really liked it, kept warm, loving it. And so as always, thanks for joining me. I hope this helps you stay warm in your car, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.